Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 1st July 2017. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader of Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not spend time to introduce myself. Instead, if you want to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help you in your own trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual in today's topics, we will look at technical charts of oil, gold, India's nifty future and few forex pairs. We'll also look at SPY, QQQ, DIA and IWM through technical charts. Then look at broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis through key graphs and ranking table. In the process, we may review some of the community posts since last class and look for potential trades for the upcoming week. If you have any stock idea in mind, we'll be happy to discuss that and analyze it together. Q&A is throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel to ask questions. I'll try to answer them as I go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me move to the live charts that I cut and pasted and made ready for today's session. Let's start with US oil. We are looking at weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. In weekly, we see that we had a false downside breakout it ended with a backdrop color cyan that is bullish candle. It tried to go below the watermark low level, but now it has gone back above the watermark level. In the daily chart last week, we discussed that USO gave a bull release signal. Here on Friday, activity was also high preceding that. Still, there was no box trade setup as there was no visible support level. This bull release signal, cyan plus or cyan up arrow, in Metastock it comes as arrow, is to be used only in sidewise market for swing trading or it may be used in fine-tuned template for day trading. When the stock is going down, like in this case for USO, then in trending market, downtrending market in this case, we are not to use this bull release signal for trade entry. However, some short position, if anybody was holding, could be closed or protected with stop loss. Right now, US oil is overbought. As we can see from the stretch signal on top of the candle, there is no trade signal right now at the right edge of the chart. The next possible trade could be if US oil came down and then tilted up, thereby giving a possible go with flow trend following long trade. Let's look at gold. For gold, in the weekly chart with backdrop template, we see that gold is bearish. 
the backdrop color is magenta however it is near memory support level in daily hop on template on the right hand side it was moving with wild moves from upper boundary to lower boundary lower boundary to upper boundary upper boundary to lower boundary again in the recent period it is jumping up and down effectively moving sideways it is also near a lot of direction lines all the direction lines are coming together yellow cyan magenta and white it is expected that market will move little bit sideways here before deciding which direction to go it will not be safe in my view to try to take directional trade in gld right now as we see that there is a memory support in weekly and also in daily the next possible trade could come if price comes down to the memory support level and then goes back up from there giving a possible bounce long swing trade it may also be used to enter profitable day trades using q fine tune chart let's look at nifty india's broad market index future so we are looking at nifty chart using hop on template last week there was a memory support line that is broken now so it is not displaying in the chart anymore last friday price was just above the memory support line the traffic light color was red the flow candle color was magenta it was at pendulum high shown by the thumbs down signal as we discussed in last week's roundup because price was just above the memory support we were not going to take any possible go with flow short trade those with real time fine tune chart could have tried to enter profitable day trades but there was no swing trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart price has displayed a bull release signal it is close to the lower boundary there is no standard trade setup at the right edge of the chart let's now look at sing dollar in last round up we discussed that price was going to value area near the declining yellow direction line and we mentioned that if it goes down it may give us a go with flow short trade opportunity that opportunity came on wednesday and scd fell from that place it has already dropped enough to cover an amount similar to the risk distance so one could book some profit or wait for it to hit the lower boundary or the watermark support level if somebody doesn't book any profit it is important to make sure with protection profit stop that the trade is risk free from this time onward so we had another profitable swing trade in sgd this week let's look at australian dollar australian dollar was in uptrend it was going up with higher low and higher high it came to the upper boundary and then came down to the value area we discussed last week that if it tilts up from there it would give us a go with flow long trade opportunity that opportunity came on this cyan candle however it has an upper tail so if somebody was using real time fine tune chart they could have entered the trade during the day itself if somebody was using end of day chart then looking at the upper tail one might not enter the trade at end of day instead they will enter the trade next day using real time fine tune chart if it was a swing trade the stop will remain as usual below the recent low that stop was never hit instead aussie dollar went up at the right edge it hit the memory resistance line 
that is the profit target for swing long trend so profit will be booked at that point at the right edge of the chart price is overbought it is also near memory resistance and upper boundary so we will not be taking any long trade and because it is in uptrend there is no standard short trade setup in australian dollar at the right edge of the chart okay today we are looking at canadian dollar jpy using daily chart hop on template looking back somewhat we see that there was watermark support line price tried to come there one time two time and three times each time it bounced up from there so on the third instance this was a triple bottom and using the bull release signal one might enter a trade either on the yellow candle using real time chart or the next candle if one was using end of day chart from there price went to the value area thereby giving us a profitable box long trade in sidewise market after that it went close to the upper boundary came down to the support level near value area and then gave us a cyan that is bullish flow candle one two three four five days ago that is on monday this week price already had higher high and higher low so this cyan candle gave us a go with flow long trade setup one could enter the trade at the end of this day profit would be booked at the upper boundary for cat jpy price is now overbought it is near the memory resistance line price has gone above that so there is no long trade right now price is already overbought also above upper boundary if it tilts down there may be something like a bounce short setup however as i mentioned earlier bounce short setup has specific requirements one of those requirements relate to the activity being very high however for forex symbols it is not easy to get very or extreme high activity so if somebody is using the bounce short setup on a forex pair like cat jpy then one need to be careful i suggest trying to use the box and bounce short trade setup on a forex pair only if you are watching that pair regularly so you start to have a feel and you may ignore the activity and take the trade based on your feeling and the other conditions like memory is there or not bear release is there or not one may look for that if price is tilting down but it is in strong uptrend so if somebody takes a short trade on cat jpy then one need to book profit quickly at the right edge right now there is no standard q trade setup let's now move to usa market and look at the broad market etfs we start with spy we are looking at spy using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side weekly backdrop is continuing with bearish color that is magenta but price is not falling much friday's candle ended with a lower tail in the daily hop on chart spy is moving sideways and yellow line is too close it is usually prudent not to try to take a trade when price is coming from above and approaching the ascending yellow line so there is no trade right now at the right edge of the chart one may wait for spy to move out of the sideways moves we note that since the bearish headwind appeared price could not go up 
it was a very profitable option trade opportunity using short call vertical or put back spread in last week's class we discussed back spread in detail in relation to valiant vrx you will notice that whenever a headwind signal comes the back spread trade may be taken very effectively in this case a put back spread will make money if price close below if it goes up also put back spread will make some money or at least have very very small loss that is the characteristics of put back spread it will make a loss only if price remains within this narrow range when a headwind signal comes one may use the put back spread effectively for valiant in last class we discussed another situation where back spread can be taken effectively that is when a stock breaks out of narrow range with a very bullish candle you may watch last week's video to see more detail of that let's look at qqq qqq dropped with extreme high activity in the weekly chart we can see for last several weeks activities on the down weeks had been much higher than the activities on the up weeks though qqq dropped this week with a very bearish shape candle it could not go below the memory support line close somewhat above with a small lower tail in the daily chart using hoppon template price dropped in daily starting from the gap up and the reversal candle which was this green candle price opened with a gap up but sharply closed down since then price is moving down there was no easy swing trade opportunity however this green candle had a very profitable gap short day trade opportunity this magenta candle this green candle and this magenta candle again these three successive candles had very profitable early range breakout day trade opportunities as price is sitting just on the yellow direction line it is not safe to take any trade right now one possible upcoming trade could be if qqq comes down to the memory support line in daily which is probably when it will come to the memory support in weekly also and then tilts up from there giving a possible bounce swing trade or a profitable day trade opportunity catching the exact price when price hits the memory support and goes up from there so right now at the right edge there is no trade opportunity in qqq let's look at dia this week dia was strongest of the three major etfs it bounced up from the watermark level it tried to go down but ended with a lower tail that could not go below this watermark level it is now overbought there is no bear release signal price is moving with narrow range candles for last two weeks daily hop on is also showing an effective sideways move with narrow range candles for the whole week there is no trade setup at the right edge of the chart the best choice may be to wait and watch so when you look at all these three etfs we see that there is no clear direction in the market right now though there were some large sell offs in technology there is still no direction it may be safer to wait and if we look at the last ETF IWM will have the same conclusion in the weekly chart we can see that IWM is moving in very narrow range candles for 3 4 weeks now though the color is still bullish it is moving very much sideways and that sideways move is clear 
in the daily chart also in daily iwm is sitting right on top of the memory support line so there is no standard trade setup at the right edge and also it is becoming difficult to anticipate a trade right now let us move to broad market sector and industry analysis now we are now analyzing the broad market internal we are looking at nasdaq composite index using weekly chart on the left hand side and nyc composite index weekly chart on the right hand side we can see that this week just like qqq was underperforming spy nasdaq composite index underperformed nyse composite index nasdaq closed the week with a bearish shape candle we can see right from the open of the week it couldn't go up continued to fall down for the whole week whereas if we look at nyse composite index weekly bar it is a very very indecisive bar open is exactly same as close it's like a doji candle with almost exactly same height upper tail and lower tail and we saw this indecisiveness when we looked at qqq dia spy and iwm charts as well we also look at three broad market internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume and we see this week all of them declined all six of them 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 though it declined four of them ended positive indicated by this green colors two of them ended negative so in summary we say that the indices are still in strong uptrend the internals are weak because they are not able to surpass the previous highs and for this particular week internals are neutral because this is using weekly charts and broad market indices this analysis is to be used only for long term investing not for swing trading or day trading let's look at sector performance every week we look at sector performance using 10 broad market sectors the red bar indicates the performance of this week blue bar one week before red bar and the green bar two weeks before blue bar together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance we will follow the bullet points one by one we see that in this week five sectors are up and five sectors are down again showing indecisiveness in the market consumer non cyclical is down for all three review periods now two weeks ago we saw that walmart wmt and kr kroger fell to q support levels memory or watermark levels or annual pivot levels after amazon acquired whole foods market at that time we have discussed the possibility of wmt and kr holding to support these two stocks were fundamentally strong as well as we saw using q vital fundamental analyst wmt and kr held those support levels for two weeks now those situations are very profitable using short put verticals when they drop suddenly the implied volatility is high and therefore options are overpriced if they are coming at a good q support level then we can anticipate the support to hold and trade with short put vertical if the support holds we will make money because time decay will be in our favor we have short option position and if it goes up we will have profit because of delta benefit as well let's look at wmt and kr charts this is the chart of wmt using daily clear chart template we are talking about this big drop from this magenta candle to this red candle this happened when the news about amazon acquiring whole foods market became public it had extremely high activity 
Walmart on that day started with a huge gap down, but sharply went up, closed above the memory line that was existing at that time, closed also above the watermark support level. Looking at that, somebody could have taken a short put vertical trade and for two weeks now, 10 days, price couldn't go down. So the trade will be very profitable by now. Let's look at Kroger. We are looking at Kroger now using the decision template, which shows the annual and quarterly pivot levels. When Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods market was announced, at that time, Kroger dropped sharply for two successive days. Both had extreme high activity. The first day couldn't go up, so we will not try to take any reversal trade. It opened with a gap down and continued to go down sharply. That was a profitable gap short day trade opportunity, but we will not try to take any long trade on this candle. Next day, price opened again with a very large gap down, but started to go up, closed above the annual pivot level with extreme high activity. Those cases also one could trade with a short put vertical option structure. And because price continued to hold above the weekly pivot line for two weeks now, this will also be a very profitable trade. In both cases of Walmart and Kroger, we could benefit from the extreme high volatility or option price when we entered the vertical trade setup. And we also benefited from the directional move as both went up from the respective support levels. Let's go back to our sector analysis. If we look at basic material sector, basic material is now up for all the three review periods for one month now. We mentioned about this strength in last roundup. There was a question from an Indian trader also on this. We looked that not only the sector was strong, multiple industries were showing strength. This sector was lagging for a long time. Those are the times we start looking for bottom catching opportunity. In last class, we identified several fundamentally strong stocks that we could try to catch at the very low price. VALE was one of them in iron and steel sector. Vale had a profitable trade, I think. Let's look at the Vale chart. We are looking at Vale now using weekly backdrop template. As we can see, last week, Vale closed inside the triangle with a yellow neutral backdrop color candle. And this week, it opened outside the memory resistance and continued to go up from there. Because it opened outside the memory resistance, one could try to take the trade right in the beginning of Monday using real-time fine-tune chart. From the weekly chart, it seems that it has broken out of the triangle and there is a chance that it will continue to go higher up, giving us a profitable long trade for long-term investing. Let's move back to sector analysis. Healthcare went up for five successive weeks as discussed in last week's roundup. However, this week it dropped as seen from the red bar coming to the left hand side of the zero point. Last week's roundup, we already identified several pharma biotechs that were overbought. Specifically, we looked at BMY, ABT and election. We mentioned it was not safe to try to enter long at the end of Friday last week. And that analysis turned to be useful. They all failed to go up. 
instead bmy gave a profitable box short trade and election dropped from multiple memories at minimum long profit was to be protected using q protection signal let's look at bmy and election we are looking at bmy using daily hop on template if we see near this point we can see that bmy was overbought and then on this yellow candle it had a bear release signal on that candle price also tried to go above this watermark resistance level and then came down thereby creating a false downside breakout because the yellow candle had a lower tail one may not enter a short trade on that day however the swing trade could be entered next day using early range breakout for a swing trade the stop would be always above the recent high that high was never touched and price actually came down on this thursday candle price hit the cyan direction line that would be the initial profit target of a box short trade and profit would be booked on this day so this turned out to be a profitable swing short trade based on the discussion we had in last week's round up let's look at alexian alexian was also identified to be overbought in last week's weekly market round up and it was near many many memory resistance lines from there price has dropped there was no clear swing trade setup though price dropped from memory it was not accompanied by very or extreme high activity so it didn't meet all the requirements of bounce short trade setup so a swing trader might not enter any trade however a day trader might use this gap up day that is this yellow candle use rd range breakout to take a very profitable gap short day trade keeping in mind that it was also reversing from memory resistance lines back to sector analysis utilities declined we had discussed the possibility in earlier round ups of utility declining several utilities were at very high pendulum high level utilities were strong for many review periods those were the times we started looking for potential short and there were some very profitable short opportunities in several utilities when doing industry analysis we look at a few utilities charts explaining the profitable short trades that could be taken at the very top let's look at industry performance every week we look at the top 10 best performing industries we'll go through the bullet points one by one we see that gainers are spread across diverse industries there is not much of a pattern this week distiller and vintners gained we had taken a bounce short technical trade on twe treasury wine in australia because the industry was strong we didn't want to hold on to it for very long it already hit profit target this trade was shared in the traders community you may look at the traders community to see more detail on the entry and exit of this trend we see that marine transportation gained i identified costco based in hong kong as a potential long using 360 degrees top down analysis 
so how I identified it is that first I ran sonar using Q global to find the stocks at pendulum low. Then I copy pasted all those stocks into Q vital to find which one of them were fundamentally strong. Costco turned out to be one such strong stock at pendulum low. Then I used QH to check if the industry was gaining strength. And because now there is a desktop version of QH, I was able to check the data in the middle of the week as well. So marine transportation was showing strength. A company in that industry, Costco, was at pendulum low starting to go up and it was fundamentally strong. So it was a very good long term investment as well as swing long trade opportunity. This was shared in traders community. You can see the charts as of the time I posted the trade. Aluminium for this industry last week, we had identified a, a Alcoa as fundamentally strong. Alcoa had false downside breakout on 23rd June. So it tried to go down, but go back up. This week it went up giving a profitable swing box long trade opportunity. Let's look at Alcoa chart. We are looking at Alcoa using daily hop on template. Last week we see that price tried to go below this watermark support level, come down but go back up. The bull release signal came on this yellow candle. False breakout was completed on this green candle. The green candle closed above the watermark level. So that was a proper box long trade opportunity. It was accompanied by heavy activity also. So that met all the requirements. One could take a long trade on this green bar putting stop just below the recent low. And as price went up for the whole week, hit value area, the initial profit target was reached and the trade could be exited profitably. Once again, using the analysis of industry, sector, and stock in the weekly market roundup, we could find very profitable trades. I have a long position in Vail. I didn't enter Elqua. I also have a long position on Valiant. My Valiant trade using back spread was profitable. And I wanted to hold it longer term, so I closed my valiant back spread with profit and switched to stock holding. Let's continue with the sector analysis. Footwear is the best performer in this week. Last week, we identified FL, that is foot locker, as a potential long. It had optimal valuation that we saw using Q Vital. Since then, Foot Locker has gone up. There was a bullish headwind in the daily chart. We discussed in last roundup that if it closes above 50, it will create a false downside breakout and it will fill a large gap that was created in the stock. Again, a stock that we had identified already last week did well. Let's look at was performing industries of the week. Start with the bullet point one. Five of the worst performers are in technology. No surprise as we saw that QQQ dropped. Two stocks, ANET and FISV. Both of these were shared in Quiz Playground. They dropped sharply and hit profit target. Once again, the trades shared in Traders community closed with profit. Let's go to quiz playground and see the analysis of ANET and FISV when I posted them. I traded ANET and FISV with simple put options and both of them turned out to be very profitable. 
this was the quiz I posted on 27th June. Which of these two stocks would you short today? FISV or N8 or both or none? And these were the charts of the two stocks as of that day. This is FISV using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. We see at the right edge price tried to go above watermark level above memory resistance level and sharply came down with a very bearish shape candle and with very high activity so it met all the requirements of a bounce trade setup let's look at na in this case we had a nice situation where we had a bearish headwind in weekly chart and also a bearish headwind in the daily chart price was at pendulum high at those locations the bearish headwind appears in magenta color this met all the requirements of a headwind trade and i took a short on in it also using put option in the quiz i mentioned about checking the fundamentals of these two stocks let's go through it we are looking at basic information FISP was in business support services and Arista Networks was in communication and networking. One was in industrial sector and one was in technology sector. Now we are looking at price performance because we have only two peers in the peer group now. The heat map is not so useful, so ignore the heat map color red and green. Instead, if we look at the percentages for these monthly periods, month one to month 12, we read from left to right for N8, we see the percentages were steadily going up. If the percentages are steadily going up, we can imagine that in the stock chart, the stock was steadily going up for those 12 monthly periods. And for FISV also, though the percentages are lower, we see between month one to month 12, reading from left to right, the percentages were also steadily going up, indicating that FISV also was going up steadily for last one year. Now I looked at the fundamental information Again, the heat map is not very useful. So we'll ignore it from here instead. I hope we have the scoring tab. Yes, we have the scoring tab. In scoring tab, some of the values like the first three columns, they don't calculate only against the peer group, which is very small here. They compare the fundamentals or rank them or score them across broader universe. And we can see immediately that N8 was weak. The relative value and internal values both were red, so it was very overpriced. And for FISB, internal value was overpriced, relative value was neutral. Both had good earning stability. And this is FISV, how it played out. The short entry was on this candle when I published the quiz. It was a bound short trade setup because there was memory support line that will be our profit target and the profit target was hit easily in few days time. So by 30th June, the trade would be closed. We are always careful about memory line. So if we have a short trade, price is hitting a memory line, we'll certainly book profit. For N8, we took the short trade when I published the quiz on this bearish headwind signal at pendulum high. As of Friday, it has come down to value area. Close to the memory support line, hasn't touched the memory yet. But remember, for headwind trade, our profit target is value area. It is already reaching value area, so by Friday, surely we will book profit again we had 
two profitable trades based on the quizzes shared in the quiz playground. So back to voice performing industry, we see that technology dropped, but much before people started talking about technology dropping, technology dropping based on Q global technical charts and Q vital fundamental analysis, we could identify a net and FISV as potential short candidates and exited both the trades profitably. Let's look at hotel industry. In past roundups, we discussed about protecting profit and potentially looking for short in hotel industry while many hotels were at pendulum high. Again, same approach as before. If an industry and stocks in that industry are at pendulum low, we start to look for long opportunity like we did for Jailiad, we did for Valiant in pharma stocks. Similarly, when hotels were at top, we had discussed Marriott, Hilton, Hyatt, etc. to try to look for short opportunities. And this week, hotel is worst performer probably some profitable swing short trades could be taken. At minimum, long profit could be protected based on our earlier discussion. So if you are holding hotel stocks, keep an eye on them. There is no reason to erode profit if the industry is showing weakness and if the charts are also showing weakness for the respective stocks. We specifically discussed about few companies related to travel industry. We discussed Expedia, Citrip, etc. It was seen to have very weak Q fundamentals for Citrip. Citrip short trade was shared in Graduates Club. The entry and exit details of this profitable trade is available in Traders Community. Let's go to traders community and look at Citrip as it was posted and see how it is doing now. This is the post on Citrip. Overpriced travel company has a go with flow short signal. Posted on June 26th. On 26th Jan around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is how the chart looked like. It had lower high, lower low in the daily hop on chart. We had a magenta flow color candle at the right edge. On the left hand side, weekly backdrop candle color was bearish, that is magenta, relative performance tilting down. So it met all the requirements of go with flow short trade. If we took the short, our profit target will be near the yellow direction line or the memory support level. Stop will be just above the recent high. Fundamentals were also weak. Let us look at CTRIP through QVITAL now. CTRP.O, we choose the root stock. We already have industry. Click the peer button to get all the peers. By the way, over the weekend, there was a minor release on QVital. So those of you who are using it may download the latest version. We click the calculator button to retrieve QVital statistics. We can go through the tabs one by one, but we go to scoring now. And instantly we can see from the color coding that Citrip's earnings reliability is very poor. In all our systems, red magenta means poor and green cyan means strong. So Citrip had poor earnings reliability and it is overpriced fundamentally. On charts, we had a go with flow short trade opportunity. So that is ideal for us where fundamentals and technicals are aligned and I shared the trade in the traders community based on that and see how it played out July 1 posted it during the weekend update on the trade. 
we wanted to book profit in the memory support line we are always careful about memory support or resistance so if we are taking a shot that we did on this magenta candle our profit target will be the memory support which was hit on thursday and the profit will be booked price was also as you can see near the yellow direction line that would be another reason to book profit so this trade shared in traders community again closed with profit let's now look at the industries with biggest rank improvements and declines we'll follow the bullet points last week we mentioned that though oil was weak oil industries were not so much weak relative to oil this week four oil industries went up uso us oil also went up from oversold condition the four industries are oil equipment and services oil equipment service distribution oil and gas and oil and gas producers now if we look at oil and gas producers specifically we discussed unt in last week's webinar it had strong fundamental last week we saw that though us oil the oil commodity went down unt unit corp was holding to its support and it actually gave us a very profitable box long trade in this week let us have a look at the chart this is unt using daily hop on chart we can see here price tried to go below the watermark support level but then went back up it had a bull release signal on this yellow candle the up arrow it was preceded by heavy activity this met all the requirements on daily chart for a box long trade setup for a long trade the profit target will be the value area or the declining memory resistance line top will be just below the recent low stop was never approached instead friday and thursday both the days the memory resistance was hit so our profit target was achieved and the trade would be exited if we look at apparel retailers they have a very large rank improvement this week as we discussed in many weekly market roundups sometimes the rank improvements foretell the higher performance of the industry apparel retailers were declining for very long time but now they are continuing to strengthen as seen from q age ranking there may be some bottom catching opportunity here we have already identified in previous roundups several fundamentally strong companies like finish line finl gps gaps etc you may keep an eye on these stocks let me divert to q age industry sector analysis for a moment and look at apparel retailers now i'll use the desktop version so in the desktop version whenever we open the tool it shows as of that time what is the ranking of all the industries in the industry analysis and the ranking of all the sectors in the sector analysis it covers the 12 monthly periods and for more recent period it covers 5 days ranking and 10 days ranking both for sector and industry to look for apparel we can simply go to the filter and search for apparel we have apparel retailers here click okay and instantly we can see that it was weak for all the 11 months in month 1 that is current month it improved rank from 158 to 128 over last 10 days it improved a lot more going to 
ranking 73 and for this specific week the rank has become even higher nine out of 160 industry groups they have a very large rank improvement as seen from the graph also and we have few stocks very strong fundamentally you may have a look at them on technical charts but let me show you some interesting fact based on q vital fundamental analysis that may give us even more reason to take a long trip by the way i am long on finl but these are not trade recommendations you have to analyze for yourself but i am trying to explain the rationale behind my trade sometimes i share them in the community sometimes i just discuss them in the weekly roundup but you may make your own decision let's look at the fundamentals for finish line if i nl we are retrieving the industry prs and we will calculate the vital statistics now directly go to scoring maybe taking a few more seconds to refresh okay it has refreshed now immediately we can see for finish line it has very good earnings reliability score we can decide just from the color coding no need really to read the number it is optimally priced relative to others and its internal value is also very strong all these numbers are strong and if we look at gap gps same thing again very strong earnings reliability relative value very good internal value very good another interesting thing the short squeeze score finish line has very high short squeeze possibility so does gap gps so this is another interesting fact that i considered when going long for FINL and I think on the technical chart also it was supporting so that's why I entered FINL long. You can see that many companies in this industry have short squeeze potential. Back to industry analysis we had a look at industries with biggest rank improvement. Let's now look at industries with biggest rank decline start with bullet one technology sectors decline is reflected in three tech related industries decline that is software computer hardware and software computer services so software hardware services everything is down now there is a difference between healthcare and technology healthcare also declined this week technology also declined this week However, technology was at a very high level. So we could consider taking short and we did have profitable short trades. Two of them were shared in the community in at an FISV. However, for healthcare, it is different. It declined this week, but over longer term, it was lagging very much. So it went up a little bit for three, four weeks, it went up and then it declined one week that is not a reason to start shorting healthcare stocks right now because they were at very bottom technology is different because it was at very top that is why we are not thinking of shorting healthcare right now but shorting technology provided the charts are supporting may be all right that is bullet two Bullet 3, Valiant, discussed in previous roundup and shared in quiz playground with potential callback spread options after breakout above watermark resistance turned out to be a profitable trade. Let's have a look at the quiz playground. This is the post. This drug broke out of rock bottom price. So I posted it as a quiz. Will you consider long-term buy or swing trade in VRX? Well, yeah. options were long-term swing trade or both. And I had mentioned Valiant is down more than 26% as of that time over one year. With recent pharma stocks recovery, VRX also move out of base at the bottom. Is there a possible long trade? And I looked at Q vital fundamentals of VRX 
I saw that earnings reliability was very strong, relative value optimally priced, internal value the best possible score of 100. There was some short interest also. Only the other company with bigger short interest was MNK and EGRX. Now VRX had fundamentals very strong. EGRX, you can see the internal value was red and the other short interest high is this one. MNK, MNK's earnings reliability was not good. So VRX was one stock where earnings reliability, relative score, internal score, and the short interest percentage score all were in favor of taking a long trade. And if we look at the weekly line chart, then we saw that price had a very large drop, but at the right edge, it was going up above the memory resistance line. As of last week, not this week, last week, Thursday, it broke out of the memory resistance level. Based on that, I had shared the quiz. How it played out? We discussed in the last round up that based on this breakout, Thursday, the week before's breakout, it was a possible long trade using call back spread. And throughout this week, it continued to go up. Back spreads using call make money if the stock goes up. So this was again a profitable trade that we discussed in weekly market roundup and also shared in the traders comment. That was our industry and sector analysis using graphs. I would like to spend some time on the QH industry ranking. Before that, let me look at some of the utility stocks because I see the UK is coming up. Remember, I mentioned that when utility was at very high level, we were looking for potential short. Now, Duke had an extremely profitable short trade. We had a bearish headwind signal and a bear release signal on this yellow candle. The yellow candle tried to go below the watermark level, but close slightly above that. It was preceded by heavy activity. So we could be ready to take a short trade if price came down. And in next few days, it actually closed below the watermark level. So one could take a low risk short trade at this price point with a stop above recent high. The stop was never hit. Instead, it fell to value area, tried to go up, come down, giving a go with flow short setup and fell down again. So even if somebody didn't take this short trade using headwind signal, it was easy to take the go with flow short trade for a large profit. Also remember I mentioned that when we have a headwind trade signal using the candle's length, it is possible to take a back spread option trade. And the back spreads can be organized such that if the stock price closes above this candle's high, it will have no loss. If it goes below the candle slow, it will have a large profit. So this headwind could also be effectively used using back spread. So whenever you have bearish headwind or bullish headwind, you may consider taking a back spread trade. And for this go with flow short, it could be taken with put option. It could be taken using stock in many ways. Now Duke is not the only utility stock where you could find profitable trades. Let's use Q Vital to find the PRs of Duke. Sometimes we have surprise findings from Q Vital. Let's look at NEE. We see that on this day, we had a bear release signal, tried to go above watermark and then come down. So it had a false breakout. 
earlier it had a bearish headwind signal at the same price level which was accompanied by heavy activity so this met all the requirements of a box short trade setup and if we took the short trade then it is already profitable now on friday it closed with a bearish candle shape it is near value area it may give us a go with flow short trade setup next week so we came to these two stocks to illustrate that when an industry is very high and then we see stocks in that industry starting to move sideways we may be ready to take short with very low risk trades both duke energy and next era energy gave us profitable trades probably there were many other utility stocks that gave profitable trades as well i want to spend some more time on q edge to give you some pointers on where to look for trades in the upcoming week let's start with sector analysis we can see that utility is now going down we already mentioned about it when utility was very high that it was time to start looking for short technology is going down we are tracking that we had some profitable trades healthcare for one week went down but it was lagging for a long time so we mentioned we are not going to look for short in this right now now look at energy we saw that oil went up UNT had profitable box long trade and energy as a sector went up so we may look for potential long if you remember our industry analysis of today you notice that even oil equipment services companies went up this way we discussed it in previous round ups fundamentally they were not strong so it may not be good idea to try to take long term investments in those but certainly technical trades for swing trading are possible basic materials gaining strength we saw possible long opportunities in elqua vale etc now we go to industry analysis let's look at clothing and accessories see it was magenta for long time lagging and now it is turning cyan gradually probably some profitable trades could already be taken and you may look for long here even now let's look at construction material this is another industry that is gradually turning from magenta to cyan so you could look for possible longs there also personal goods let me use the filtering we see personal goods is becoming stronger turning from magenta at the very right to cyan on the left hand side so you may look for long trade in personal goods and then one more interesting thing i found lots of industrials are showing strength industrials gaining strength industrial transportation is stronger cyan now industrial suppliers had a big rank improvement industrial metal mining very strong now rank 15 out of 160 industrial machinery gained in rank industrial good services gain industrial engineering gain significantly industrial and office rate gained but slightly so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and an even general industrial 9 improved in rank even this one diversified industrial improved in rank all the industrials improved in rank and you can see from this area they were magenta for a long time so this may be a sector coming in favor right now you may look for potential long trade here let's look at utilities see how beautifully for us it turned from cyan to magenta for all the utilities so we were thinking of taking short or at least protect 
profit in long positions in utilities sector several weeks ago and that was a good decision because now utilities are starting to decline of course before taking the trade we decide our final entry point using q global technical analysis we use this industry sector analysis to align more and more edges to our trades paper do you have any stock that you want me to look at okay if not this is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for joining i look forward to you joining our next session <laughs> profitably and have a great weekend